No, the, the, the addition of the normal eye sockets is that particular artist's representation. Kuklops means round face okay, in Greek. It means, you guys know what kukla means as a word root. Circle, okay? Um, and so where we get our word cycle, okay? something that goes around in a circle. And Kuklops, it just means round face. He's described in the Odyssey as having one eye. Um, doesn't say whether it's in the middle of his forehead. Uh, actually, it does. Um, it's on his forehead. But the depiction that you have in the textbook is uh, is an imaginative artist's rendition. Um, it also shows him sitting on a bench, which is slightly unrealistic. It also shows him playing uh, shepherd pipes, which is uh, you know the pan pipes that are sitting next to him, which is probably unrealistic as well. Long and short of it, we need to start translating. Um, I'm going to tell you that while I removed the translation from the Lesson 40 test, um, the next test you guys take, Lesson 41, will have a substantial translation portion in it. And I want to start drawing as much attention and practice to that as possible um, so that when you guys are ready for the final, you guys can read and understand and show me that you can read and understand and translate Latin. Tuam um, wentis octus est. I'm going to make a jump. Right now, we only have the seven minutes left directly to line number eight. And that's where we get our excellent volunteers who haven't bothered to take out their books like Joey. Um, okay, Augusta. No, at this point, let's, let's just try to translate. Excellent. It's very smoothly done. Okay. The he in question is, again, Ulysses. Um, and uh, when you guys get your translations of the first seven lines back, we'll review what happened there. Okay. In Sicilia, I'm going to read it so that people can begin to piece it together. In Sicilia, habitaverunt cuclopes gigantes alti et teori qui singulos aculos habuerunt. Um, I will give you a heads up that more and more in Latin for Americans, there are going to be words that are used which you haven't been asked to learn before. But bright people like you, okay, and, and, and most of you are shining with a 250 watt bulb out there, okay, um, are going to be able to figure out what gigantes are. Okay, Kaiser. Excellent. Very good. Okay. I do want to make a small modification uh, to what you, you just said um, on the basis of the weirdness of Greek words that come into English. Okay. Um, anyone know what the singular of this word is? Okay. And some Greek words like cyclops come in with um, no change to their plural. Some come in adding ES, okay? Um, like what most people have done to the word octopus. You guys know the plural of octopus and don't say octopi. No. It's octopuses. Unless you're um, aware of, <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, the eighth grade reaction. <laughs> okay, unless you're precise and you say it's octopodes. Yes. Yes. Anyway, that that that's that that's a that's 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 a super precise for people who know Greek. But you guys don't know Greek. In any case, the plural of cyclops is actually pronounced cyclopes in English. Okay. So uh, I, I'm going to be saying it, and my reason to tell you that is not to have you use it correctly. Although, yay, if you do, it's so that when I say cyclopes. Um, you know that I'm referring to plural ones, because there was more than one, um, as the plural verbs indicate there. All right, so in Sicily, there lived the Cyclopedes, tall and harsh giants who had one eye each, or one eye apiece. All right, good. Um, Mr. Pot. That's good. That's nicely done. They feared neither, and the way you brought in Nequa is just fine. They feared neither the laws of gods nor of men. 
if you wanted to, some of you might say they fear the laws neither of gods nor of men. And either way is okay. It's the author's way of stating that uh, the Cyclopes were um, kind of outside of not only human society, they didn't believe in the basics of um, sophisticated human society, and they also were not welcomed by the gods. Although, I do have to ask you guys a quick question. What relation do the Cyclopes have to the gods, if any? Okay. Um, tomorrow. In some myths, yes, they are the children of Poseidon slash Neptune. Okay. And what I'm going to tell you is the, the version that is followed by Homer in the Odyssey. Okay. That the Cyclopes, and in particular the mean one we're going to meet soon, Polyphemus, is the son of Poseidon slash Neptune and a sea nymph. In other versions of mythology, they are the children of Emma? Yes? Not, not quite the children of the Titans, but of Gaia, the Earth goddess. Okay? And um, in that version of myths, they, they are the um, creatures, if you want to call them that, who make the lightning bolt that allows Zeus slash Jupiter to become king of the gods. That's sort of the path that is followed by Rick Riordan in the Percy Jackson books, if, if you're more familiar with those. But as far as the Odyssey goes, it's really important to know that the Cyclops Polyphemus is the son of Poseidon, which is why Poseidon hates Ulysses slash Odysseus, because of what Ulysses does to Polyphemus. And we're going to pause there. Okay. I know some of you want to run screaming out of the room, others of you want to keep translating, but we're going to go ahead and stop. We'll carry on on Monday.